Hi and welcome to another episode of Peacemake TV. In today's WordPress video we're going to be taking a look at another one of Visual Composer's widgets. We're going to be taking a look at the call to action option. We're going to take a look at how we can configure it, what it looks like and the features that it has available to us. So let's crack on and take a look at that. So I've got a new page created, I've got a row inserted in Visual Composer and I'm ready to add the call to action widget. So as always we click on the plus, all our options available to us and the one we're looking for is the call to action function. Once we click on that we have the call to action settings. Now at the moment there are only two tabs, we've got the general tab and we've got the design options tab and depending upon different features that we may select, for example use custom fonts, we can then go in and configure those new tabs become available to us. So at its very basic we have a couple of options available. We've got the actual heading which is going to be your call to action, a subheading should you want to use it where you can put a little bit more information about your call to action, how you want the text aligned inside the call to action, the style you want and the, uh, the, the shape whether we want to go for rounded corner, square, fully round etc. We can adjust the colour we can insert additional text that gives the descriptions, we can specify how wide it is, we can add a button that allows people to actually click that to take them through to another page that gives them more information about a call to action, we can add an icon to it, we can animate it and we can apply an additional class to it. So what we'll do to start off with is we'll take this basic information, see what it looks like and then we'll take a look at some of the other options that are available to us to customize it and add some more functionality. So first things first, the heading. Well, we'll leave that as it is and we'll just put a subheading in. In this example, I'm going to make sure that my text is center aligned. I'm going to choose to have rounded. I'll choose the 3D style. And I'll just apply, well, we'll have it as a gray option and we'll leave the text filled out as it is and we'll set this to 90%. I'm not going to worry about a button at the moment or an icon, we'll take a look at that afterwards and we'll have it animate from the center. I'm not going to style this uh, or add any custom styles to it so I'll leave the extra class name empty. We go through the design options, you can see we've got all the things we're used to, we can apply margins and borders and padding, we can apply the styling we want to it and how we want to control it. For now I'm going to leave that as is, switch back to the general tab save this, update my page and then we'll switch over to the front end of the website and take a look at what those basic uh, settings have given us. Okay, so if I refresh the page so we can see the animation, we'll see it zooms in from the center just to give it a little bit of impact and there's our call to action. It's pretty uninspiring and just be honest about it, it wouldn't make me want to do anything. So let's go back to the admin, let's take a look at how we can make that a little bit more appealing so let's switch back over, we'll come in and we'll edit our call to action and we'll adjust a few of the settings on there to make it a little bit more interesting. Put this back to, I'm going to go for square, I'm going to put it back to 100%, if I can see the option, there we go, 100% and we'll come down and we'll say yes I want to add an icon and we want that, we'll go for at the top. And you can see now what that's done is that's opened up and given us an additional icon option so we can click on there and we can go through do we want to place it in a border, do we want to use either Font Awesome, Open Iconic etc, the different font libraries that are available, uh, icon libraries that are available to us. We can then choose the icon we want to work with, well we'll just say this is someone's birthday party and we'll click on the birthday cake. We can specify the colour of the icon which I'm going to go for white and we can specify if we want a background shape, so we can have circles, squares, rounded, outer circles, etc. So we're going to go for circle, and we'll set the background to be a nice blue colour. We'll have a really big chunky icon on there. We can specify a URL for that, if we want to link that icon through to something else, we can animate that icon, and again we can apply an extra class name to that icon, so we can target that with our custom CSS. Again, I'm not going to worry about it in this particular video, but I've got a video that covers how we can target specific elements through Visual Composer and how we can create custom styles to apply to that on a page by page or a global basis. 
So I'll put a link to that in the description below and on this video so you can click and take a look at that if you're interested in it. But for now, we'll just leave it as is. So there's our icon. I'm not going to place it at a border. So come back to the general settings. Let's just have a little check. Make sure I'm happy. I think let's change it from the 3D and we'll go for outline. So let's take a look at that. Let's just save the changes to that. So we've now added an icon to it. We've changed the style of it. And let's take a look. If we update and then we switch back over to the actual website itself. Refresh the page so we can see the animation and the changes that have taken effect. So there we go. Completely different look to it now. Okay, so let's switch back over to the admin and let's take a look at some of the other options. Click come back in and edit. And what we'll do is we'll take a look at how we can create or add in custom fonts. So if I click, you can see we now get heading option, which allows us to specify a few other things. So we can make the heading a link. We can specify the font size, the line height, the text color. We can limit it to it only uses the default font family from the theme, or we can come through and select any of these particular fonts. And then we can adjust the style of it as well. So we can say you want it to be bold. Let's just say we want to have that as 72 pixels. I have no idea how big that's going to look on there. And let's just change the text color to something a little bit punchier. Go for blue just to make it look really nice. Come right, to general, we can do the same again if we want to for the custom font for the subheading. So we can come in and we can configure that. And you can see we get a new tab now for subheading. And we have all the same options available to us. So we'll go through and choose railway again. Uh, we'll leave the defaults on there. We'll change the text color to blue again. Yep, that'll do. And let's just try a different style again. Let's try that to be the classic look. Let's change the background. Um, no, we'll leave it as it is, actually. Yep, we'll leave everything else. So we'll save the changes to that. We'll update it. I'll switch back over to the demo site so we can see what it looks like. So let's just refresh that page. And there we go. You can't miss that one. Well, that really is all there is to the call to action option in Visual Composer. I hope you found this video useful. If you have, please hit the subscribe button below. It helps. If you've liked the video, hit the thumbs up to give it a sort of a, a bit of a kick, should we say? And if you've got any comments or feedback, please leave those in the comment section below. And if you've got any ideas for future tutorials you'd like to see, please leave those in the comments below and we can take a look at adding custom videos just for you. Until next time, take care.